We all met in the middle of the road, between the vehicles. Grace saw the wound that we had accumulated on our mission and left to get what little medical supplies we had left in the SUV. The new couple stood on one side next to each other, while Grant and I each walked to our wives. The new man had an odd, glassy look in his eyes, and I couldn't seem to shake the slight, uneasy feeling I had about him. After a few seconds of us standing silently, awkwardly staring at each other, I finally spoke up first. Okay, so we should probably introduce ourselves. I'm Trevin, this is my wife Grace. The other guy over there that also pulled you guys out of there is Grant, and that's his wife Brandy. We have a dog, two little girls, and the SUV. What are your names? He put his arm around his wife. An odd smile grew on his face before he began to speak. My name's Sam, this here's my old lady Destiny, you can call her Des for short. He spoke extremely fast and barely opened his mouth to speak. The speed of his words and the little bit of slur that he had in his voice made it seem difficult to understand what he was saying. Destiny looked like a very quiet, mousy woman. She definitely came across as someone who didn't really talk very often. How the flying fuck did you two get yourselves caught up in that shit like that? Brandy blurted out. Sam shot Destiny a quick glance before answering. The way these two were acting just didn't sit right with me, and as much as I could tell, that something was off. I just couldn't place it. Medicine. We were looking for medicine. In the houses. Thanks for the help. Again, his words were spoken so quickly I could barely separate them into actual sentences. Like band-aids and Tylenol, or what do you mean? Grant said while Brandy cleaned and wrapped the bite marks on his body. Where are you two from? Grace asked. The odd smile refreshed on his face at Grace's question, and he seemed to ignore Grant's. I noticed that his speech was almost twitchy and jittery. It was odd and confusing, almost as if it was a foreign language, even though it was in fact English. Oregon, drove down here, crazy shit out that way. After the few seconds it took to decipher his speech, it hit me that it was as bad as I thought it was. That meant that everything really had started in numerous places all at once, and little herds of these nightmare creatures were roaming and spreading out all over the country, probably happening all over the world. This instantly caused me to start second-guessing our plan to head south, but I realized that if they were everywhere, then it didn't really matter where we went. I got a huge red flag that pulled me from my train of thought when Bodhi got out of the vehicle and trotted over to us. He stood close to my side, but met the new couple with a low growl followed by a turn of his head to look at me. The look on his puppy dog face I could only describe as concern and confusion, as if to say to me, do you not see what I see? I don't like these people. I'll admit, I truly wanted to take his wordless suggestion, but I didn't know what to do. Having just saved their lives and having them standing directly in front of us, I mean, what was I supposed to say? You're welcome for saving your lives, now go away. Hope you don't die. I knew this new level of insanity we called the world was all apocalyptic and everything, but I felt I should still have some form of manners and dignity. Still, the way Sam kept acting had me convinced he was on some type of drug, which made me nervous to have around us, not to mention being around the girls. The thought of having more people for added protection did sound pleasant, however I absolutely did not trust these two new people. I broke from my train of thought trance again as I reached out and placed my hand on Bodhi's head to calm him. He abruptly ended his growl looked back at Sam and Destiny and chuffed at them before running back to the SUV and hopping back in. We didn't have much choice but to absorb these two new people into our group, and knowing that I put in my suggestion for our next plan of action. If it's crazy out further west like you say it is, I say we continue making our way south. Okay, but south puts us either going back through that town or backtracking and finding another road. Grace said, bringing up a good point that I hadn't thought about. Gotta find somewhere with a pharmacy still looking for medicine, Sam said, causing me to make a mental note of a question that I had about that. Just as the mental note was made in my brain, Brandy very bluntly asked the question on my mind. What kind of fucking medicine are you looking for? Sam just smiled while Destiny actually spoke up in her soft, barely audible voice. Painkillers and muscle relaxers. Bad back, 
Sam added, placing a hand on his lower back and leaning against it, trying to sell his point. The painkillers I thought we could probably benefit from having a supply of also, but I was very strongly thinking that our intended use for them was completely different from their intended use. Okay, well, I'm sure we can find one along the way. The question is, do we trek back through the beast-infested town and continue south on the other side, or do we backtrack to the next road over and try to avoid it? Grace finally said, trying to change the subject and keep us moving along. Just then I heard a bark from the SUV, and we all looked back at Bodhi sitting in the passenger seat as he began to bark at something else off in the distance past us. I turned to try to match his line of sight to see what he was barking at, and I instantly noticed as a few of the little gecko scouts creatures scampered from the field up onto the road about 20 feet from us. Just as my eyes settled on them, I could see them begin to shoot out little puffs of the pink mist. Shit. Decision time's over. One way or another, we gotta move, I said, pointing at the little lizards. I say we go back and take the next road over, headed south. Everyone seemed to agree as they hurried to get into their vehicles, and we all got moving. We still had no map, and all our navigation was basically done off of guesswork. When we finally made it back to Interstate 80, we all turned east, and as I made the turn onto the on-ramp, I noticed the fog moving in from the west, and wondered if there was even anywhere left that would be safe from any of this. Pure anxiety and fear rose in my mind, as the thought of eventually not being able to protect my family anymore surfaced from the depths of my psyche where I'd pushed it down so far before. Something is off about those two. It makes me feel uneasy, Grace said, breaking the silence and pulling me back in the moment. I was so graceful that she spoke, distracting my mind and allowing me to push those thoughts down and out of my mind once more. Yeah. I think so too, but I'm not really sure what to do about it. I'm glad to hear you say that. I was sure that I had been the only person to think that, I said, with a lot more relief sounding in my voice than I had intended to give away. I can barely understand Sam, and that Destiny girl barely talks. Yeah, I noticed that too. Honestly, I think they may be pill junkies. I, I didn't see any actual wounds on either of them. I don't think any amount of typical back pain would cause me to put myself into that kind of situation, unless I was some sort of... You know, junkie. Keep an eye on them. Try to keep them away from the girls if we can. It just makes me... Grace trailed off, staring out the window. I had been so focused on our conversation I hadn't noticed at first, but we had begun to drive into more fog. We were barely halfway to the previous place where the truck stop, and the purplish-gray fog had already crept out multiple miles. Look out! Grace yelled. Just a second too late, as two of the flame spiders came running out in front of us. The SUV bounced as one of them crumpled under the tires. The other jumped and slammed into the side of the vehicle, leaving a dent, but bounced off and rolled limp onto the road. A screech echoed through the air as I checked the rearview mirror to see two of the lurkers running full tilt after us and gaining quickly. Bodhi began barking and growling out the back window. What the fuck? I'm driving 70 miles an hour. How are they catching us? I yelled as I glanced at the speedometer. Suddenly, I felt the vehicle shake as one of the lurkers landed on the back. It head button smashed into one of the back windows with the horn on the top of its head, and the other lurker ran past us and jumped into the jeep ahead of us with Grant and Brandy in it. I could see the vehicle sway as it hit the jeep, and I was worried they might lose control and crash, but Brandy recovered quickly and kept the jeep on the road. Bodhi quickly sank his teeth into the throat of the lurker as he put its head inside the vehicle on the back. He caught the lurker just behind what I would call its jawline, and even though it had no mouth, Bodhi locked in tight and tugged at the creature's throat. The lurker extended its mantis arm looking straws from its face and thrashed blindly, trying to make contact with Bodhi, but the angle was off because of where our dog had a hold on him. Oh, hell no, Grace said as she climbed over the center console. Cover your ears, Eddie. This is going to be loud. I wasn't quite sure what Grace was planning at first but I soon realized that she picked up the shotgun and made her way into the back. Addie quickly put her hands over her ears as Grace pumped the gun and pressed the barrel against the face of the lurker. Get the fuck off my dog! Grace yelled before the head of the lurker exploded, setting the purple blood all over the back of the SUV. The creature slowly slid out the window and rolled as its lifeless body, and now headless body, hit the pavement at 70 miles an hour. 
Izzy and Addie were both crying from the deafening volume of the shotgun in such a small space, and Grace quickly tried to reassure them both that everything was going to be fine. She only had a few seconds to do so before I had to cut her off, since we weren't out of the situation fully yet. Good job! But now we need to try to help Grant and Brandy in the Jeep, I yelled back to her as I watched the lurker climb onto the roof of their car, and the talons begin to shred the roof. Another spider jumped to the SUV, slamming its side before bouncing off and hitting the ground. The exit sign for the next road south flashed past, and I could see the truck up ahead begin to take the exit. Scenario after scenario flashed in my mind as I tried to think of a way to help the two in the Jeep. Just as they began to take the exit, Brandy slowed the vehicle down and I saw Grant crawl out of the passenger side window with his legs still inside the car to brace himself. Grant, who had various strips of shirt tied around him as bandages from the bites he sustained earlier, drew the bow in his hands and shot the lurker. The arrow hit the beast right in the chest, causing it to shudder back and lose most of its footing on the roof of the jeep. The creature was left flailing with one talon still stuck in the roof as Grant knocked another arrow and shot again. The arrow killed the creature for sure as it hung limp on the vehicle, still caught by a single claw. The truck kept driving south as Brandy stopped at the bottom of the exit ramp. Grace stayed with the girls while I got out to help them get the lurker unstuck from the vehicle. Once the talon broke free, the lurker fell to the ground in a lifeless heap. We shoved the corpse off the side of the road and out of the way. A scream from one of the flaming spider creatures rang out from behind us, and we all scrambled to get back into the vehicle and make our way down the road. As I drive... Grace begins to call over the radio to the jeep. Hey, are you guys okay? There was a brief pause before we heard any form of response. Yeah, we're fine. Grace's voice crackled back over the radio. Where did the other two go? I don't know. I was going to ask you the same thing. I think they just kept driving. Grace replied. I asked for the mic, and Grace handed it to me before climbing over the center console and making sure the girls were okay, settled after the loud boom of the shotgun blast. Hey, Sam, Destiny, do you guys still have your radio? I said, trying to figure out why they had just sped off without the rest of us. The radio returned to me, nothing but static and silence for a few minutes before I repeated my question. I looked back at Grace, whose eyes I could feel burning into the back of my head. She was giving me a look that could only be described as, See? Told you we couldn't trust them. I repeated my question to the CB mic one last time before getting a response. However, the response I got was from Brandy, which I was expecting. I think those fuckers left us in the dust, Trevin. I thought something seemed a little off about them. Yeah, I'll admit I thought the same thing. I guess we'll see if we run into them again. Maybe, maybe we can confront them about what happened. I responded, feeling a little defeated that I hadn't seen it coming more. We drove for miles in silence after that. My mind ebbed and flowed over different things that I had noticed and felt that I should have seen as red flags with the odd couple back then, when we were talking to them on the road just outside of the town called Wallace. I was brought slowly back in the moment as I noticed the jeep had begun to slow down ahead of me. I crept over onto the oncoming lane to catch a glimpse around them, attempting to see what was up ahead and figure out why they were slowing. Just as I began to do that, however, I heard Brandy's voice come over the radio. Well, look who the fuck we have here. Grace crawled back over the center console and grabbed the microphone as she settled back into the seat, before calling out over the radio herself. Uh, what is it? Who is it? Just as she finished her sentence, the truck came into view with Sam and Destiny standing on the side of the road next to it. Brandy pulled the jeep off the road behind them, and I pulled the SUV to a stop in the middle of the road next to the truck. I got out of the truck... And just as I was about to go off on them, Sam interrupted me in an attempt to explain himself. Batteries died on the radio. We, uh, pulled over when we noticed that you weren't behind us anymore. You just noticed we weren't behind you? You've been driving for nearly an hour before we caught up to you. What the fuck, man? Do you not check your mirrors? Brandy yelled at him before I could get a word out. It doesn't matter. Look, if you're going to be traveling with us, please try to keep a better track on the group. The better we work together, the better chance we have to survive, I said as I noticed Grant doing his best to calm Brandy down so she didn't start a fight. Okay, fair enough. What do you think of these then? Sam said, in his typical speedy voice that was so hard to understand. He stepped towards the front of the truck and pointed at something on the side of the road. As I joined him near the front of his vehicle, my heart sank. As I saw a crudely made sign saying nothing more than the word salvation on it. 
I think there's more people holed up somewhere. Sam said to me as he walked closer to it. No, um, not at all. I think it's another one of those crazy-ass creature-worshipping cults that sprang up, I said, trying to sound as sure of my suggestion as I felt. No, oh, man, you think? I bet it's more survivors. I'm gonna go check it out. Check what out, Sam? There's no directions. It's just one word on a sign. Plus, I've seen the same tactic used before. They place these signs trying to get any survivors lured in, and then they indoctrinate them into the cult, and they they probably sacrifice them to the creatures or, or some shit. Still, I want to check it out. I mean, me and Death are going to go take a look, Sam replied, clearly ignoring everything I just said. Well, you're not going in alone. Let's Let's go talk to the others and put together a plan before we do anything. We walked back over to see Grace, Brandy, and Grant talking amongst themselves while Destiny pretended to be interested in something on the other side of the truck. There was definitely something weird about that girl. She was, at the very least, not very social, that much was for sure. Okay, listen up. There are more of those salvation signs up ahead, and Sam is wanting to go investigate with Destiny. I told him that he wouldn't be going in alone because I don't want anyone getting trapped again, so... How do we want to do this? I said to the group as we entered the circle of adults. Well, I sure as fuck don't want to go in there. Brandy blurted out first. Yeah, Brandy and I can stay back with Bodhi and the girls at the edge of town while you guys go in and investigate. Grace added. Without saying a word, Sam and Destiny walked away to their truck and I sat in it while the rest of us finished up the plan. As they walked away, Grace and Brandy looked at each other and exchanged what the hell was that all about looks. Grant and I looked at each other as we walked away and Grant sighed loudly before speaking. Well, I guess we're doing this. I just nodded back at him in response before we all started walking to our vehicles. As soon as we started moving, however, Sam started the truck and began to drive off. People really aren't team players, I thought to myself as I picked up my pace and got back in the SUV to follow them. We drove a few more miles in silence other than the random sounds and laughter from the girls as they made faces at each other's to keep themselves entertained. I suddenly felt bad as I heard them laugh. We hadn't been able to let them out of the car very much, or to just be kids. I knew that Izzy was only one and Addie was just barely three, but... But I wish I could have let them out and let them spend time playing in the grass or... Something like that. Sadly, with things the way they were, it wasn't like we'd be able to just pull over at a park and let them play without constantly having to worry about getting ambushed or attacked. Again, just like before, the closer we got to the next town, the more frequent we began to see the signs. Salvation, safety, sanctuary, other single-worded signs that, to me, only meant it's a trap. And were some kind of crazy cult. The fog wasn't completely absent as we crept in through the outer edge of town. But it wasn't extremely thick either. From what I could gather, it meant that there weren't very many of the creatures in the area, but that was truly just a guess, and a rather hopeful one at that. While we passed the third block into the town, my brain began to yell at me, and you're such an idiot, this is stupid, why are we doing this, echoed loudly in my mind. The words nearly pushed all of the thoughts out of my mind. The jeep ahead of us pulled off to the side of the road, Grant and Brandy not wanting to go any deeper into the depths of the town. I pulled off to the side behind them so that we could all get set up. As I got out, I noticed Sam didn't stop the truck, but instead kept driving deeper into the town, following the signs. These fuckers don't really play well with others, do they? Brandy said as she stepped out of the jeep. Yeah, what are they doing? Did they not see that we're all stopped? Grace said as she stepped out of the passenger side of the jeep and walked around back to grab the rifle. Grant and I both checked our bows to make sure that they were still in working order. Sadly, we had kept breaking arrows in the past few fights we had been in, and our supply was starting to dwindle. Both Grant and I each kissed our wives and opened the back door to the SUV and told the girls to be good. Bodie made a soft whine and chuffed at me as he jumped out of the vehicle and began to follow me. No, sorry, poopy face. You gotta stay here and protect the girls from me, okay? I said as I patted him on the head. He responded by chuffing at me again and sitting down. I looked at Grant. We both took a deep breath and exhaled before I spoke to him. You good? I said as I gestured to the makeshift bandages he had, covering the bites and wounds from our last encounter only a couple hours ago. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Sure doesn't tickle, but I'll be okay. Let's do this. He responded. After giving Grace one last look, which she returned with a very heavy, be careful look in her eyes, we both started off into town following the signs. Bodhi let out a soft whine as he watched us walk away, but soon trotted back off to the SUV and jumped back in to sit with the girls. Luckily for Grant and I, it was only a handful of blocks before we came up on Sam's truck, which happened to be empty. The thought of them wandering off by themselves infuriated me because their lack of teamwork put the rest of us at risk. Then again, I guess we could have just let them go and not risk our own lives just to try and save theirs. Another two blocks passed before we came across the cult fortress, or, or what was left of it. The once tall makeshift fence had been trampled and the old high school beyond had large sections of collapsed building. The smell of rot and decay surrounded us as we walked cautiously past the trampled gate. We were surrounded by bodies of both creatures and cultists, all long since dead. Pools of dried red and purple blood surrounded each body, and as much death as I could see, it made me worry about all the still alive that we couldn't see. Suddenly, from behind us, we heard the screams of a couple of the spider creatures. Tension began to build in my throat and my muscles, but slightly receded as I realized that they sounded distant. Still, with no signs of Sam or Destiny, we made our way into the building. We used our leapfrog tactic, moving through the building, both of us having arrows knocked and ready to fire. A screech from a lurker rang out through the air and my anxiety rose, noticing that it had been much closer than the spiders. We worked our way past the main office of the school, and next to it was the nurse's office. I stopped and knelt to one knee, drawing my bow back and preparing to fire. Grant saw my sudden action and placed his hand on my shoulder before doing the same and getting ready for a fight. I glanced over at him, and he met my eyes with a what-is-it look. His question was quickly answered as rustling and clanging came from the nurse's office. My breathing slowed and every muscle in my body began to tense up. We sat waiting, most likely no more than 30 seconds, but it seemed like no less than an eternity. The sounds from the room began to get louder, and I heard it coming towards the door. I took a deep breath and held it, preparing myself for a quick aim and release. It felt like everything around me slowed down as I focused in, and suddenly Sam walked out of the door closely followed by Destiny. The two of them were carrying handfuls of pill bottles that they had snagged from the office. I let my breath go, and relaxed more before I started yelling. I knew I should have been much quieter, but I couldn't help it. What the flying fuck, man? Do you realize the two of you just about got shot? He froze in place, just staring at us for a few seconds before answering. Let's hit the gym. I want to check the other lockers, he said, walking off, completely ignoring my concern. I looked at Grant, giving him my best, can you believe this shit look? Clearly not being able to stop or slow down Sam or Destiny on their apparently secret mission to find painkillers. He followed them, basically doing nothing more than providing protection. When we finally made it to the gym, we were met with a sea of bodies and a colossal punch in the face of a stench. The gym had huge dark holes in the walls, leading off to the other parts of the school, I assumed, but they were too dark to really tell. Sam led the way, completely ignoring all sense of caution, making a line directly for the locker rooms, where I guessed he was going to raid the gym teacher's office for more drugs. Grant and I both stopped in the middle of the gym, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up as we heard a strange gargle emit from one of the holes Sam had headed directly past. Before I could get the words out to warn Sam, the bear-sized creature we had seen before exploded out from a hole in the wall. It quickly covered the distance between the two of them and slammed into Sam, crushing him into the ground. I could see as the talons on the creature's strange bird-like feet dug into his flesh. My brain screamed, oh shit, and I froze for a second in shock before pulling myself back into the moment and drawing the bow back and taking aim. Grant remained frozen in shock a little longer and I had to yell to get him to snap out of it. The creature was so foreign and unnerving as it let out its gargled form of a roar and its face split vertically, opening what I would call its mouth. Grant finally snapped out of his shock as I let my first arrow fly. It hit the creature in the shoulder, but did little more than just glance off. I, I was confused. 
as to what had just happened as I quickly knocked another arrow and took aim. The creature's unsettling triple forked and toothed tongue slowly emerged from its gaping maw, and just as it was about to dive it into Sam, Grant's arrow struck the creature in its ribs, and unlike my first arrow, it stuck. Good shot! I yelled out at Grant as I let my second arrow fly. Destiny did little but crouch by the wall and scream at what she was seeing. My second arrow missed any soft spots again and just ricocheted off of one of the huge spikes coming out of the creature's shoulders. Sam screamed as the creature sank more talons from its other feet into his body, pinning him to the ground even more. Grant's second arrow soared towards the beast and hit the inside of its mouth, causing it to shudder back and pour its purple shimmering blood all over Sam as it sputtered. The creature was clearly in pain now, and my heart was jumping with excitement that we were winning. The stalker let out another deep gurgle of a roar, and my excitement quickly faded as it began to sprint towards me. Holy fuck! Kill it! I yelled, as both Grant and I drew back more arrows. We were able to release just in time as the creature quickly covered the distance between us. Both of our arrows hit the creature in its open mouth, and it came crashing down, sliding along the floor. And finally, stopped at our feet. Grace and Brandy watched as Grant and I walked off deeper into the fog, seeing the purple swirls of color envelop us as we disappeared down the street. After a few short minutes of silence, Grace decided that she could let Addie out to stretch her legs a little and run around the car to burn off a little energy. Mommy, where's Daddy? Addie said as she got out of the SUV. He went to go help some people. Now grab your Barbies and you can play, but stay very close, okay? Okay. Is Daddy coming back? Addie said as she grabbed the two remaining dolls from Grace's hands. Yeah, he'll be back. You just play with Sissy and Bodie while we wait. Sound good? Addie smiled and handed Izzy one of the two Barbies. The one-year-old, not really grasping the concept of Addie's game, just chewed on the Barbie's arm while her older sister pretended for her. Bodie sat next to the girls just watching inquisitively and nudging Izzy with his nose if she began to crawl off too far. Grace stood next to Bodie, who was constantly scanning the surroundings while she watched the girls play. They talked softly about what they thought the next move should be and where they should go next. After about 15 minutes, they both suddenly fell silent as a scream rang out through the air. Spider, Grace said as the two of them met eyes. We just always call them crawlers, but I guess they do kind of look like spiders, Brandy responded. Another scream echoed in response to the first and Bodie began to growl. And don't do that, Bodie. That's a bad puppy, Addie said in response to Bodie growling. Grace rushed over to scoop Izzy up and open the door to the SUV. No, Addie, that's good. That's his way of telling us there's something bad coming. Now, I need you to get in the truck, okay? Hurry. Bodhi continued to growl, but stopped as Addie stood up. He pushed her towards the open door with his nose without putting either of them in the car seats. Grace shut the door behind them, just satisfied that they were contained in the vehicle and protected. Brandy yelled out to look off in the distance, and Grace turned just in time to see the soft orange glow of the creature brighten as they got closer. Crawlers, huh? I like that better than spiders. You ready? Grace said as she chambered around into the rifle. Brandy pumped the shotgun in response and they both took aim. Grace drew in a breath, held it as she looked down the scope, aiming at the creature closest to them as she began to squeeze the trigger, but suddenly... Let go as another couple screams shattered the silence from behind them. Fuck, this is escalating quickly, Grace thought as she refocused and fired at her first target. Success. The glowing orange ball jerked and rolled off to the side. Solid hit. Brandy spun around and looked for the others that had called out from behind them. A screech echoed out from deep in the town, also sounding like it was heading in their direction, but that time, Brandy finally saw the crawlers coming from behind them, ones that had gotten much closer and met eyes with one while trying to aim down the sights at it. She cried out as the flood of horrific images of torture and despair ravaged her brain. While Brandy was paralyzed, the other crawler leapt into Grace's back and took a bite out of her shoulder, just as she fired at the remaining one in front of her. The impact of the creature caused her aim to go wild, and she missed her shot. Bodhi ran, barking, and pulled the beast off of Grace's back by its thick lizard-like tail. He thrashed it back and forth violently, and it screamed before the tail ripped from its body and slammed and bounced off the pavement. Another screech from the lurker ran out, much closer this time. 
with Grace being crouched and Brandy standing paralyzed behind her. Grace slammed her elbow into the back of Brandy's knee, sending her to the ground and causing her to break eye contact with the creature. The crawler still sprinted towards her now. Grace quickly looked down the scope and pulled the trigger. The beast being so close at that point virtually exploded with a heavy 308 bullet. It only took from the moment that she broke eye contact till she hit the ground for Brandy to come back to present and focus on reality. As soon as her back hit the ground, she aimed the shotgun between her legs and fired, hitting the crawler nearly point blank. The lead pellets of the buckshot reduced the creature to little more than a purple bloody mist. Bodie just barely dodged as the lurker slammed its head first into the front of the SUV trying to attack him. Both Grace and Brandy spun and began to take aim before Grace called out, Wait! Don't hit the truck! Girls! An engine! Fuck! Brandy responded before running off into the yard of the nearest house to get a different angle. Bodie barked and ran around the side of the vehicle to get away, and Grace scrambled to her feet and ran into the yard with Brandy. Both women took a knee to get more stability on their guns, and as the lurker rushed towards them, Brandy fired. She hit low, but nearly took one of the creature's legs clean off. As the lurker stumbled, Bodie barked and ran from the other side of the jeep and barreled into the side of the creature, making sure that it hit the ground hard. Bodie chomped down on its neck and began to thrash around, tearing a chunk out and then running off again. Brandy pumped the shotgun again and ran up to the lurker quickly, placing the barrel against its head and pulling the trigger, showering herself in the blood spatter of the creature. What the fuck? Brandy yelled out in a frustration before continuing. We gotta go in and get them. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Grace just began to move in response, ushering Bodie into the vehicle and hopping in behind the steering wheel. Brandy ran to the jeep and got in, and they both sped off into the town. Destiny ran to Sam, helping him struggle to his feet. Blood stained his clothes from the various rips and tears in his flesh from the creature. Okay, let's go check that office, Sam said, as he finally got up onto his feet. What? No! Fuck that! We have to go right now! I yelled at him. Another gargled roar came from another one of the holes in the wall, and Sam relented moving as fast as he could with Destiny's help towards us and back out of the building. As we got out of the building and to the truck, we noticed that it had been destroyed. The windows had all been smashed in, the driver's side door had been ripped clean off, laying on the ground nearly six feet away. The steering column had also been shredded and ripped out, making it look like something big was trying to make room as it crawled inside. God damn it, seriously? Grant yelled at the sight. We all kept moving as fast as we could. Suddenly, the jeep and the SUV came speeding down the road and screeched to a halt in front of us. The windows of the jeep rolled down and Brandy yelled for us to get in. Sam and Destiny climbed into the back of the jeep. Grant hopped into the passenger seat and Brandy began to pull off as I jumped into the passenger seat of the Denali. The two vehicles sped through the town and came out on the other side, still headed south. I noticed a bite taken out of Grace's shoulder and ripped up another spare shirt to use as a bandage. I cleaned and wrapped the wound while she drove and told me what had happened. The little bit of fog that had been mostly confined to the town lifted as we drove for another hour down the tree line and very hilly country road. Eventually I saw a hidden drive with a mailbox next to it leading up a hill further than I could see with all the trees, and I called up to the other car with a radio. Grace pulled up to the drive first and Brandy and the jeep had to back up to follow us up it at the top of the hill, secluded by lots of trees, sat a cabin. It wasn't flashy or fancy, but we all agreed that it seemed safe enough to stay for the night and give us a little much-needed rest after all the insanity the day had included. We did our best to secure a few things inside the house and bring in a couple of comforts that we had stored in the vehicles. After what I called a good enough meal, we each picked a room and huddled in our family groups. I was so exhausted from everything that day, it didn't take me very long before I met the welcome embrace of sleep. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. Hey, it's May, which means me... And actually, a bunch of creepypasta narrators, uh, it, it's our birthday month this month. So you know what would be super, super cool? If you hit that sub button, if you hit that bell, and if you hit that uh, that uh, like, the thumbs up button, sometimes. It doesn't have to be this month, you know? Sometimes, sometimes it could happen, um, you know, anytime. But it'd be real cool. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be a really great gift. 
Or you can check out the live stream that happens 24 seven, nonstop, all the time. And like always, I wanna give a big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs. And I really appreciate it. If you guys want to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and see all these cool, fine folk that I'm about to mispronounce the names of here or in the description down below. People such as Jacob Schaefer, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Arse, Ken Lendo Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Krause, Melancholy Corpse, Hollow Zero, Ferb, Harley, Tainted Raven, Katie Birch, Sashi Sazaku, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Miss Zandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Robert White, Andre Garcia, Snails Brennard, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Lovins, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, 1-800 Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, Kiwi the Sloth, Tommy Green, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting the channel. You're all wonderful. I, I, I love every single one of you guys. For real, you guys help me out so much, as well as everybody down there in the description below, as well as everybody else who watches and subs and, and does everything else with this channel. Thank you guys so much. And as always, sweet dreams.